All right, here's a new number, E. E is going to represent an irrational number from here on out. So whenever you see E in a problem or whenever you use E, just know that that's going to be a number from here on out. Now we can we say that it's defined to be this quantity 1 plus 1 over n raised to the n power, where n increases without bounds. So n becomes very, very, very large. Well, what happens is this is approximately 2.7182. Eight, two, dot, dot, dot. It keeps going on forever, non-terminating, non-repeating decimal. Uh, this constant was invented by a very famous Swiss mathematician by the name of Euler. Um, what we need to know about this is a few things. One, it's a number. It's bigger than one. As far as graphing, that'll be helpful if we know it's a number bigger than one. But where is it on our calculator? I think that's an important thing to know. If you look up above the LN button on your calculator, you should see e to a power. And mine looks like e to the x. To get to any of these uh, symbols up above our buttons on our calculator, we have to first push second or shift that button and then the ln button in our case will bring up e to the power. All right, next up, continuous growth or continuous decay formulas. All right, the big keywords here are continuous and either growth or decay. Growth means things are getting bigger Decay means things are getting smaller over time. So we have a couple different versions of this. One is kind of the general version. The other is more for business applications. You may have seen the business applications one before. All right, so how we defined exponential functions before, we said A was gonna be the initial value or like the starting amount or the y-intercept. Well, P, the principal, that's what you start with if it's a banking problem down here. E is a number in both cases. R is gonna be a rate in both cases. It's just in banking problems, things tend to get, be getting larger, so our rate's always gonna be positive. A little bit different if we're looking at kind of the general case. Um, if our rate's positive, things are getting bigger, we call that exponential growth. If our rate is negative, however, things are getting smaller and we call that continuous decay. So either decay, continuous decay, or continuous growth, we're gonna be kind of referring back to the same formula. And you can use either one of these versions. Basically everything means the same thing. Just be careful, decay, rates negative, growth, rates positive. And then T's our time in both cases. All right, so let's jump into a couple of these problems and see how we fill in. Okay, so a person invested a thousand dollars into an account earning a nominal 10% per year compounded continuously. So big key word here, when you see compounded continuously, that's pointing us towards the, comp the continuously compounded interest formula. So you can use your version if you want with the A, I'm gonna go with P times E raised to the R times T power. Um, we wanna know how much was in the account at the end of one year. So kind of filling in everything in the appropriate places. I like listing out my variables off to the side, just as a reminder, A, P, R, and T. All right, we don't know the accumulated amount. That's what we're looking for, what it's gonna be worth at the end of a year. We do know how much we started with. We invested $1,000. So 1,000 is gonna get plugged in for P. Our rate is this 10% per year compounded continuously. So things are growing by 10%, so two decimal places over. And we wanna know how much uh, was in the account at the end of one year. So it's 10% per year, and this is one year. So we're kind of confident that per year and one year later, everything's in terms of years as far as our time goes. So that's the information, let's just plug it in. And we can say A of one equals our $1,000 investment E raised to the 0 0.10 multiplied by one power. The multiplication symbol, I'm just using the star to indicate multiplication by one. Now to get this into our calculator, I would put this in as a thousand. And then I need E to come up. So go second, then the LN button. And then that's gonna bring up, on well, my calculator it looks like E to a power and starts a set of parentheses. I would put the 0 0.0 0 0.10 multiplied by one and close off my parentheses. Again, yours may look slightly different based on whatever calculator model you're using. But then get that all in our calculator and this should equal $1,105.17. Round it to the nearest decimal place. All right.
What about, we've got two more quick examples here. Let's say a in person invests $100,000 as at a nominal 12% interest compound interest per year compounded continuously. So again, keyword pointing us towards the continuously compounded interest formula and away for this, from the uh, compound interest formula. What will the value of the investment be in 30 years? So again, on this, let's just kind of off to the side, list out any of these variables, A, P, R, T. Okay, we invest 100,000, so that's our starting amount, the principal, at a nominal 12%, 0.12 or 0 0.12. And then our time frame, we're looking at 30 years. So we can say A of 30, and that is our unknown, is going to be 100,000. Multiplied by E raised to the 0 0.12 times 30 power. So on this one, I got this investment to be 3,659,800. $23.44. So if you look back at our previous example um, on a previous video where we invested $100,000 at the same rate for 30 years, but it was compounded weekly, we end up making a little bit more money. Our investment is worth a little bit more when it's compounded continuously as opposed to compounded weekly. All right, last one of these. Let's say we have radon 222 favorite isotope of radon, decays at a continuous rate of 17.3% per day. So our time frame is going to be in days on this. It's worth noting. How much will 100 milligrams of radon-222 decay to in three days? All right, so I did see that keyword continuous. That's important. So let's try to list out everything, A, P, R, and T. So as we take a look at this, um, Continuous is pointing us towards, again, that A equals P times E raised to the R times T. But this time, it's decaying at a rate of 17.3% per day. So our rate, as we move two decimal places over, it's natural to think that's going to be 0 0.17. However, we got to be careful about this keyword that decays. Because it's decaying, it's getting smaller, and our rate is going to be negative 0.17. All right, next up, we want to know how much will 100 milligrams, so we start with 100 milligrams, decay of radon-222, decay to in three days. So our time frame is going to be three. So we can say our accumulated amount, or what's left, is going to be 100 times E raised to the negative 0 0.17 multiplied by three up in the exponent. So I got this to work out to be approximately 59.51. And this will be in milligrams as our starting amount was also in milligrams. We're gonna be consistent with those units throughout the problem. All right, so I hope this helps out as we're setting up these problems and working on simplifying them down. Don't be afraid to ask if you have calculator questions or just don't see where something comes from on these. All right, good luck to you as you're working on uh, compound interest. See you.